Okay, I'm back. Um, yeah, it did get the other bolts. I had to use a wrench for a few of them. And see, this is the reason why you never use that black RTV silicone. Because I was wondering whether or not I would have to sit there and pull the um, those back two bolts that I was telling you guys about up here near the transmission. And yes, they do. And as soon as I pulled them, then the oil pan actually dropped. So you guys can see now that the oil pan's loose. And see, the thing is, um, that gray silicone that I'm telling you guys about, uh, if that was used, this would not happen because that gray silicone actually holds pretty well. So, um,. Let's just get this last bolt out. It does look like I have enough space to um, almost completely slide it out. Made a bit of a mess because um, there was still a lot of oil actually in the top part of the oil pan. Let's see if I can get a better view for you guys. So. As you guys can see up there, that's almost out, and for the most part, it looks like it's almost completely clear. Again, bear with me. I'm trying to do this with greasy hands in a $300 um, gimbal that I'm not trying to destroy. So, looks like. Yeah, again, I can't get this out without um, raising the motor just a little bit more. Doesn't seem like it needs that much. Just a slight bit. So I'm gonna see if I can um, raise the motor up a little bit more. And get the oil pan up. Up and away we go. Just a slight bit of movement, so seems like it might have enough clearance now. It's definitely not going to be able to go back in like this, so I'm going to have to figure that out. But finally, upper oil pan is out now. See, again, they use that cheap black silicone. It doesn't hold for nothing, it just comes right off. It's very dangerous, too. I'm actually surprised because that can get sucked up into the motor. And um, clog any ports that need to um, oil the engine. Alright, guys, just so you can see up top, this is how much and how close I actually had to get to um, raise the engine up um, so that I can get the oil pan out. I'm gonna have to definitely figure out um, what I'm doing with that because I think I'm gonna have to raise it up a bit more and I'm just a little bit close with this uh, fan blade. That shouldn't really be too much of a problem. The intake's a little bit more of a problem because it's rusting right there. Um, should still be able to get a little bit more out of it. I'm gonna test it beforehand, just to make sure before I actually um, 
set up the gaskets and uh, probably silicone the gasket up to the engine first um, just to make sure but look at that angle that is some crazy angle on this motor like this like this motor is completely sideways and uh, I think one of the reasons why they actually mounted this motor this way is to actually handle the torque better um, so that when the engine you apply um, more throttle and power to the engine that it responds a lot better to the torque. There goes um, also the dual mass flywheel, a heavy son of gun. I was gonna replace that with the M20 flywheel that I picked up in my uh, first video from Clearwater, but since I'm deciding to go six speed because that's an option, I will be swapping that out for a single mass flywheel for the uh, E46. Um, trying to figure out whether I'm not, not going to do that while I'm down here in South Florida for um, uh, winter break because my clutch is actually starting to wear out quite a bit so I want to start getting that set up properly also um, if you have a M42 one of the important things to um, look for is basically right here where this gasket goes that is a space for the oil pickup um, it's important to have this gasket good right here because if you don't then your um, oil pump is basically going to suck up air and oil and you're going to starve the motor and it's going to damage the motor alright so I decided to jump out of gimbal mode really quickly just so I can give you guys a little bit of a better view as you guys can see up there there goes the pistons Connecting rod. There we go, focused. If you can see just a little bit. Cylinder walls actually look perfect. Now, what I'm gonna do is um, start working on pulling off the um, alternator so that I can get to the oil filter base and replace that gasket also. Again, just doing these things because I wanna do some preventative maintenance because I don't need any oil leaks on the car. So there's one 13 millimeter bolt for this bracket right here. There should be another one underneath. Let me see if I can get away with um, just pulling these bolts for the alternator and um, not actually um, moving any wires that connect the alternator. Again, um, I forgot to mention this, but I disconnected the battery, obviously, because this is dealing with the alternator. There's five power points to it. Yeah. 
All right, guys, so I got everything cleaned back up. I'm going to apply some silicone to the upper oil pan and then install the gasket and then uh, reinstall the um, upper oil pan. Still have to wait because um, I forgot the gasket for this, which is the oil pickup. And I also need a seal for right here for the oil filter base. I got the gasket, but I forgot the seal. Um, took these over to um, my dad's friend's uh, shop so I could use this parts washer, so I got everything cleaned up. Did a little bit more cleaning. Again, some more cleaning up here. And I decided that I'm going to install the turbo, so that will be in my next video, so Look out for that. Okay, so I got the um, silicone or the gray Permatex um, silicone gasket maker on. Another benefit of doing this, um, it will hold the actual gasket in place. As, I, as you notice, I don't really use too much because again, um, when you tighten up the, um, the oil pan, it's going to squish that out. And if you use too much, then that will get into the um, the oil pan itself on the inside and if you use a whole lot that can um, drop into the oil and then get sucked up into the um, oil pickup and that will block the oil pickup and starve the engine um, again uh, you don't really need too much you just want enough so that it will hold the gasket in place while you're trying to um, install the oil pan and also to just make a slight um, double barrier so it gives the um, gasket a little bit of an extra life. Okay, so now I've got the gasket on. Another thing is um, once you get the gasket onto the oil pan itself, you it's always good to give it like a few minutes, like say uh, two minutes, maybe five minutes if you want. Um, that will help dry the silicone so then it helps the um, gasket stick to the the oil pan a lot better so you're not really fighting the gasket because again you don't want any of um, this to like move around slip or anything like that so it just makes your life a whole lot easier um, it makes installing it a whole lot easier um, just helps you give helps give you a, a better seal for everything um, and just makes your life a lot easier because if you're doing this like I am like by yourself then it's can be a little bit tricky to get it up and actually get it installed especially without using this trick to help you again um, this is really good because it will help you install it with um, minimal effort and uh, minimal trouble again for the the E30s right here is an important part. You don't want um, this part of the gasket to slip or get damaged, so um, helps you a whole lot. Um, another tip is you can use brake parts cleaner to um, spray down the engine because normally what will happen is you'll have the oil that's left on the inside of the engine run down, and when that runs down and you use the silicone, that actually breaks the seal from the um, the gasket. So. Uh, the gasket will seal, but then you won't really have adhesion from the silicone, so then that kind of defeats the purpose. 
So if you spray down um, the bottom end, so you spray down uh, the crankshaft, um, pistons, um, sidewalls, pretty much um, the inside of the block, anywhere where you see oil pretty much running down, if you spray those things down beforehand, again, it gives you a lot less trouble getting the gasket up, a lot less um, risk of having the um, silicone slip and then um, having leaks pretty much. So if you're doing this, that's another good benefit of uh, using the gray silicone Permatex.